Hey guys, Josiah here at EasyCaters.com, and I'm today just going to do a quick walkthrough of the settings for the multiple time frame Bollinger Band indicator on the website. Uh, so to just dive right in here, we'll go into the edit uh, settings here, customize the settings for this upper indicator. And you can see, first of all, we've got um, the overall price source that goes into the calculation for the average that everything is based on. So you can choose that. You can choose a midpoint uh, price or a VWAP. Um, any of those that are built into thinkorswim. Then you can choose your time frame for the upper indicator. It can be, um, uh, you know, the chart time frame itself. I'm on a daily right now. You can change it to a weekly, which is what it's on right now. Uh, monthly, here's what that would look like. And you just need to make sure that whatever time frame you have it set to, that you have enough data loaded, enough historical data loaded on the chart to uh, provide an average for that type of data. So uh, then you've got your displace function for the average. You can displace the average forward or backward using that setting. Uh, and you can set the average length here. Um, the deviations, uh, one, two, and three above. One, two, and three above uh, would be controlled by that. And then negative one, two, and three below down through here. Then you can change your average type. You can make it a simple exponential, whole, weighted, Wilders, any of the built-in uh, average types that Thinkorswim provides. You can turn the shading area at the upper boundaries on or off with this setting here. Uh, you can turn arrow signals on or off with this setting. You can see the arrows disappear when I turn that to no. Uh, you can turn the alerts, the chimes on or off whenever there's a crossover. So I'll turn that on or off here. And that will control all the uh, signals and the alerts uh, as a whole. But down here in plots, you can also, if you have the signals turned on, you can individually turn off certain plots. So you've got the upper band three cross. You can turn that individually off like that. Uh, up lower band one cross, you can turn that one off by unchecking the show plot checkbox there. So you can control them individually or as a group. Uh, same thing with the alerts. You can either turn them on or off here, or you can go down here into the individual alerts uh, sub panel and choose a tab and enable it or disable that individual alert here. You can control what text it shows in Message Center, what the chime sound is, and so forth. And then you've got your uh, line styles for the uh, midline is the average, lower bands, and so forth. That should all be pretty self-explanatory, but you can control the look and feel here, and you can turn them individually on or off there. And then in the global section down here, you can control the shading colors uh, for the upper and lower. So that's how that works. And now we'll check out the settings for the lower indicator. If we go in here, it's mostly going to be the same here. Uh, same price source. Here you can choose manual or chart. So if you set it to chart, it'll just take whatever the time frame of the chart is and plot the z-score, uh, the Bollinger Band z-score uh, for that. If you set it to manual, then it'll take this manual higher time frame that you give it and set it to that. Then again, you've got all the same settings here for the uh, average type, length, displacement, um, the uh, standard deviations. And then you can also cap spikes at a certain multiple of the, um, uh, of the width. And um, so essentially uh, what that will do is keep the scaling consistent so that if there's a huge spike off of the chart, off of the uh, Bollinger Band, um, uh, band at the upper band or the lower band then it will uh, cap that so that it doesn't squish the scaling down and make it hard to look at and so forth uh, but you can um, you can uh, change the look of each of these lines down here uh, you can uh, change the coloration here of the you know signaling for this actual signal line here whenever it crosses above the overbought it will color yellow crosses below the uh, oversold it colors yellow as well so you can change those colors here uh, and this also has individual alerts you can control here and uh, just like in the upper indicator so anyway i think that uh, covers pretty much everything if you guys have any questions just let me know and i'm happy to answer those and otherwise i will talk to you next time thanks